conducted by the University of Sao Paulo and the Planetary Health Alliance. I am Daniela Viana, postdoctoral researcher from the University of Sao Paulo. I'm very pleased to be introducing this interview session entitled Tools for Planetary Health Education. I would like to briefly introduce our interviewer for this session. Dr. Carlos Farron Guzman is the Associate Director of the Planetary Health Alliance. Uh, he's also the co-founder and director of the Inter-American Center for Global Health in Costa Rica and Associate Faculty of the University of Maryland in the United States. I wish you all an amazing discussion. Carlos, the word is yours. Thank you, Danny, and welcome everyone who is joining uh, from all corners of the world. Um, greeting you all from Costa Rica, San Jose, Costa Rica, where I live and do most of my work. My name is Carlos Alberto Fyron Guzman, uh, and it's my pleasure as an educator to be facilitating this panel uh, with all of you today. Uh, we have an amazing panel uh, lineup, and I'll introduce them in just one second. Um, the interview in general will try to reveal how planetary health education has been growing, which is so exciting to see how the growth of our field and, and the growth of its education um, uh, developments. Uh, we've seen the growth in different academic uh, spaces and different academic levels. We've seen uh, schools of medicine take this up, but also schools of public health, engineering, but also K-12 education and looking to promote planetary health values and principles throughout different ages. So through different examples and different uh, case studies, we'll explore today what we're, what's happening, what's hot in planetary health education. So just to give you an idea on, 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 on what's going on, there's been some really exciting uh, and recent uh, developments in planetary health education um, that the growth has been just happening at an amazing level. We, we recently heard about the launch of a new master's degree of planetary health in Spain, in the uh, Open University of Catalonia. We also heard about the creation of uh, um, a minor degree uh, at bachelor's level in, in a, a university in California. And we've just seen such a growth in courses and, and different uh, modules on planetary health. This year, we also saw the launch of the first planetary health education book, uh, the, plan the planetary health textbook, uh, which was co-authored uh, by, uh, co-edited by Dr. Sam Myers and Dr. Howie Frumkin. And I think that's an amazing uh, resource for all educators and learners around the world. It's being translated now into several languages and the reach of it will be expanded significantly with that translation. We also saw the launch of the Planetary Health case studies, uh, which are an amazing way to understand how planetary health influences the local levels. Uh, finally today, this morning, uh, we launched a planetary health education framework, which is a common foundational language for all uh, learners and educators around the world to understand uh, what planetary health education is. I'm gonna post um, uh, a link in the chat where you'll be able to find all these resources and more. So please visit the, the link that I just facilitated. I'm gonna move on to introducing our amazing panel. Uh, and I'm gonna start with Omnia El Omrani, uh, who is joining us from Cairo in Egypt. Uh, Omnia is the liaison uh, uh, officer for public health of the International Federation of Medical Students Association. She is a recent graduate uh, of, uh, and just got her medical degree. So congratulations, Omnia. I know you did this a couple of weeks ago, but as a student, she's been such a great advocate. She has more than five years of experience in uh, working as an advocate. In her role in IFMSA, she represents over 1.3 million students from over 130 countries. Uh, and her main role in advocacy is in planetary health, climate change, and non-communicable diseases. She's been uh, a focal point to the UNFCCC uh, and has worked extensively with WHO and other United Nations offices. Welcome, Omnia. Thank you for joining us. We also have Dr. Mayara Floss from calling us from Porto Alegre in Brazil. Uh, she's a family physician uh, and a member of the Wonka Working Party on Environment. 
uh, and rural practice. Um, she's been uh, present in different uh, policy brief recommendations, including the Lancet Countdown uh, for Climate Change in 2018 2019. And she is here because she is the amazing coordinator and creator of uh, the Brazilian Planetary Health Massive Online Course, or MOOC. Uh, this course has been translated into, Portu into English now, and it's available in Portuguese and English. And uh, she'll share more about that in just a second. And finally, uh, we have the presence of Dr. Martin Herman for, for calling in from Berlin currently, although he resides in, in Munich. Uh, he is the president of the German Alliance for Climate Change and Health, Klug for its initials in German. And he is a physician by training and teaches at the Center for International Health, uh, University of Munich and the School for Philosophy in Munich. Uh, He's been an incredible advocate for transformational change in the health sector, the commercial sector, and global health in general, and have worked, has worked extensively with uh, United Nations, as well as other allied organizations, such as uh, uh, the Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. He is deeply influenced by Hannah Arendt's perspective on action and power, and I think today we'll be hearing uh, some of that. So let's get started and hear from our panelists today. Um, I want to open up this first block just to give you an opportunity to tell us about your work, to tell us why I considered you to be so incredible as educators. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot first to Mayara and have you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing in relation to planetary health education and where you can find, where, how your work can inspire others. So I know for the last couple of years, Mayara, uh, your work has been the creation of this Planetary Health Massive Online course. Tell us a little bit about that. What makes this course so unique and who is it for? So thank you, Carlos. It's been a pleasure to be here. I'm not sure if you're seeing my screen. Can you just say, okay. Uh, it's really like, I'm very uh, emotive to be here. It's being uh, talking about education. It's something that changed uh, my life and planetary health changed how I see health and then I have been working with research and these things but then I feel that I couldn't touch people with this because they will not understand uh, maybe a lot of time they will not understand what uh, the research is pointing and then I, I perceived the importance of education, that we wouldn't change or think about climate change if we didn't have education. So then I started to realize it. And then with my colleague, which is, the name is Carlos as well, Eugene Fritz, we discussed it during my residency training in family medicine about creating a course. And then we did this huge project with partnership with, with Telesaudi, and we created this course, which had more than a thousand people that already concluded it. And it has eight modules that go from infectious diseases, introductory module until, um, until water and how to be activist and this kind of things. And uh, it's kind of has this rhizomatic approach that you're seeing in your screen. And we have, uh, more than uh, 50 countries enrolled and it's been like such a tour since we started it since uh, uh, 2019 and working with many hands I did the, nothing without all the support that I have the, from Telesaudi the design team uh, we are now launching a Wonka version and the translation into English was done by Planetary Health Alliance it's been such a huge effort and uh, we wanted that the course was beautiful. And uh, that was one of the points. So uh, you can see like a bit of it, of it. So all the images, all the, a lot of energy was put on, on how we design it, how we explain it and to be open to all. It's not, it's not closed to like uh, just health professionals. It's open to anyone that wants to do it. It's free of charge and it is, it is with certification in a public platform in called Tali Saud in, in Brazil. So I'm really proud to be coordinating of these efforts and to being part of uh, changing education on planetary health around the world. I think education is one of the, the day you, today is about education. It's one of the things for us to change the world. 
think it's that's it. We do have the video, Carlos. I don't know when you want to 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 share it about the course. But yeah. Have you ever considered that we only have one home? That when smoke comes out of a car's exhaust pipe or a factory's chimney, that it doesn't just dissipate, but merely circulates before entering our noses and lungs? Or that when we burn the Amazon, we are burning our home, our ecological life support system and hotspot of vibrant diversity? Scientific evidence shows that diseases caused by pollution were responsible for at least 7 million premature deaths in 2015 more than three times the number of deaths from AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. Increasing non-communicable and infectious diseases, from heart disease to dengue, are linked with rising global temperatures and land use change. There is no planet B, but there is hope if we come together under a shared vision of planetary health for all. Planetary health seeks to understand and address human-caused disruptions and transformations to Earth's natural systems, and the resulting impacts on human health and well-being. We can no longer separate our health from our environment. So what can you do in the face of our planetary health emergency? Take our free online course on planetary health to learn about the complex interconnections driving and jeopardizing planetary health and find a community in the process. We are a community forged in urgency and the time to act for planetary health is now. Save the date. This free online course will launch in January, 2021 and is open to everyone everywhere. That was great. Thanks, um, Mayara, for sharing that. And it's amazing to see uh, different elements of biomimicry being involved in the design of, of... Oh, sorry. Sorry, uh, I was saying the different elements of biomimicry and how this rhizomatic approach to to education was was incorporated. That's really really amazing. Uh, I'm gonna give now the um, the opportunity to Dr. Herman to introduce his work and the work he's been doing for Klug, which is again a very impressive amount of educational reach and breadth. What you've been doing through what you call the Planetary Health Academy, uh, also. Uh, 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 the, the, with the same initials as PHA. So Dr. Herman, your, your work spans gender, social movements, uh, ethics of planetary health. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the work that you've been involved with? Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, actually I only met Mayara uh, one week ago in a pre-meeting and I found out that on one level, our work is extremely similar. Also, we started it just on the other side of the world. So to the background of this uh, Planetary Health Academy, we have started our work about three and a half years ago because we found out that the German health sector really was sleeping with regard to the biggest threat of a planetary health crisis and climate change in health. And uh, from the beginning, it was clear that there was also a huge educational task because if the, the huge numbers of health professionals in Germany are not aware of the subject, we need to educate them first. It was also clear that given the time pressure we have with all of these things, it's not enough to transmit the knowledge as normally done at universities. It's really important to see the people coming to our courses as change agents that need to be enabled and empowered to work as change agents and uh, to understand what transformative actions they can do to actually work in their fields of interest and also in their context. So uh, we started with all kinds of different elements uh, a few years ago already, but last year when we had the lockdown because of COVID, uh, we were pushed to do one large course uh, kind of online, which we didn't think was possible before. Then it went so well that after it, we said we will scale it. So we were putting together a, a lecture series of uh, nine lectures in the, in the uh, last summer, uh, and uh, were amazed by how many people were rolling uh, and rolling into the course. So overall, we had an average in the first lecture series, 1,500 people coming. And then we have had a second lecture series in that just in the, in the process of having a third one. What might be interesting also is to understand how uh, we were focusing on kind of uh, transmitting the foundations of planetary health 
but then also the uh, kind of key facets of transdisciplinary cooperation. And the third element was examples of transformative change. What we have seen from this initial lecture series that now many universities in Germany have taken on to partner with us. They have their own courses or they connected with the course that we do online. We have seen that many doctors are taking it on. We are had in the last lecture series, we had participants joining also for more, from more than 50 countries. And through the work, we have learned how to also now put it into the work with uh, doctors. So we work a lot with medical associations now to have to set up similar programs there. So it's really like a positive infection growing through, through, uh, through Germany. And uh, um, I just think it is very important from the beginning to not only look at the knowledge challenge, but to really see that who we are really working with, these are the change agent to make the change that is necessary. So what, for example, we do is when we, when we have lectures that we always talk before to the lecturers and we are trying to always get the best lecturers from Germany, but also from across the world to join, we talk to them and make clear this is their chance to talk to 1,000, 1,500 change agents. So how are they transmitting the knowledge, but how are they, all, how are they also talking to them as peers, not as students? So this is not a university course. This is a course for uh, empowered change agents. So how do you speak to them in a way that they are taking away the knowledge and transform it into the action on their, within their life context? So, and I'm very uh, grateful for all the people now listening to us that are doing similar works in other places, because I think this uh, work of planetary health education can go viral around the globe. Thanks for that, Martin. That's a brilliant uh, intervention. And uh, you talked about change agents, and if we're going to mention change agents, we got to mention Omnia here, uh, who as a, as, a, as a representative of of a student body, uh, as a representative of youth, as a representative as from, from uh, a woman from the global south, I think your work, Omnia, has been incredible in the breadth and reach that it has had. And I review some, some applications from students, and you would be what I would uh, call a, a massive achiever in your short life. So thank you for joining us, Omnia. Tell us a little bit about the work that you do uh, in in from Cairo with IFMSA. Yes, um, thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. And um, what I wanted to share, uh, coming from an organization of medical students and as medical students who realize that we are going to be the future health workforce. In other words, the first trying responders to our patients who are going to present with either exacerbation of asthma because of air pollution or heat stroke because of increasing temperature or depression, depression because of the climate inaction that they're seeing. But at the same time as health students, we are not learning about this, nor do we have planetary health in our own education, nor in our own curriculum. So as a medical student working in my university's hospital, seeing everyday exacerbations of air pollution, being in Cairo because of the poor air quality, but at the same time, I have not learned about this in my education. I realized that also being part of IFMSA, I was very empowered. And the reason why is that in IFMSA, we wanted to create an evidence-based sense of urgency to call on faculties and universities around the world to integrate planetary health in our own curriculum and education, to better prepare us for the needs of our communities and our patients. For us to do that, we did a global survey. We assessed over 112 countries. We had 2,817 universities. And we simply asked our medical student representatives from these universities three simple questions. One of them is climate change and health mentioned in your education or not? And how is it mentioned? We saw that only 15% of all of these schools had a mention of climate change and a very inconsistent one. What was even more interesting is that we saw that even less than 12% had medical students do activities on climate change. So our faculties don't see the importance of integrating that knowledge and at the same time students do not feel that urgency. So for us to foster that energy and that urgency towards planetary health education, we had the opportunity to do a few collaborations. The first one was with the European Institute of Technology and top six European universities. We did with them the first ever course that focuses on nutrition for health and sustainability that is open for medical students and now it will be open for the public. And at the same time, we also collaborated with WHO 
we, we did an, a training of trainers manual that focuses on air pollution, but it is specifically for healthcare professionals as well as uh, for medical students to use. And at the same time, in IFMSA, we do at least four annual workshops that address planetary health and climate change in diverse countries. Before COVID, back last year, we already did it in Slovenia, in Taiwan, and also in Rwanda. And at the same time, I have personally facilitated over 94 hours of webinars, trainings, and workshops that focused on climate change and planetary health and its importance and relevance to us as health students. Amazing work, Omnia. Congratulations again on your graduation and moving forward in your career. Uh, it's really great to hear the efforts that all you are all um, engaged with. And, and I think of those efforts and I see a lot of scale, right? I see the reach of the work that you all do um, being in the thousands which is quite amazing. And uh, from, from our kind of pre-interview that we did in preparation for this panel, um, I noticed that a lot of you started with very little, an idea. You started with kind of the, the energy to do it, but you didn't start with all the resources that you have in place right now, uh, which is quite amazing to see how you've been able to create partnerships and leverage the resources that you have. To the people that are listening, what would you all tell on how to be effective going from the idea to the implementation to leveraging resources and then scaling up to this massive scale that you're all achieving? We do say small is beautiful, but planetary health will require changes at a massive scale. So Martin, why do we start with you? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the challenges. We are now in the thousands. At the same time, there are hundreds of thousands and millions out there. They have no clue. So it's really, uh, I think it is very important first to go deep. So to really have an understanding of what are the key facets in education that are different to other educational exercises. And then to see how to go broad, how to reach as many as possible. I think it's also important to be courageous to ask the best players available if they would join to teach, because for this subject, we should have the best speakers, the most uh, uh, kind of engaging and, and inspirational speakers, and uh, uh, also to be very proud. So we have from medical students to nurses, to medical professors, to, to doctors, to politicians joining our, our courses. So it's impo important to, all, uh, to, to have this all in mind. And uh, I mean, I remember when I was giving the first lectures myself, which is kind of three years ago, I was not very satisfied be after it. It was uh, 10, 15 people listening. So it's important to experiment and to constantly learn. Over time, kind of things will get clearer. And, and then when the moment is right, like last year, when we started the Planetary Health Academy, we were amazed how many people would sign up. We were expecting 200. And in the first lecture, we had 1,700. So uh, yeah, and, and in hindsight, compared to what we have achieved, it didn't take a lot of resources, also not a lot of money because all the speakers did it for free. When you do online courses, it's not really expensive. You just need quality people, quality listeners, and the rest will take care of itself. Great, and just a reminder that the best, the best players and the best speakers are more advocate are not always the ones at the top of the academic pyramid, right? You'll find those throughout yes. communities and throughout uh, different disciplines. So that's great to hear. And I know you, 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 you leverage different partnerships to bring in those best speakers, those people that will motivate change. Omnia, um, tell us a little bit about how you've managed to scale up your work. Um, yes, I think it was one of the biggest challenges that we faced as students when it comes to advocacy as well as transforming education. But the key to us um, overcoming this and making our messages and our efforts clear and integrated is through our partnerships. So for example, I will give two examples of partnerships, one for education, where we collaborated with the Association for Medical Education, AMI, and together with them, we developed a consensus statement that calls on universities worldwide to integrate planetary health in the curriculum. And this was very um, important because 
we they gave us the space to highlight the importance of meaningful student engagement that we do not want our faculty members to integrate the knowledge on their own we want to do it with them so to bring in the importance of co-creation with us as students in the transformation of our curriculum but at the same time from an advocacy perspective as ifmsa we have had official relations with the un agency that works on climate change which is the unfccc and this gave gave our members the opportunity to go every year to attend the climate change conference to go up front to their own stakeholders from their own countries and call on for ambitious climate plans from a planetary health perspective because we see ourselves as not just medical students or health students but as advocates for the nexus between health and the planet which sustains us and at the same time we also are part of the WHO NGO Working Group on Climate and Health and board members of the Global Climate and Health Alliance. And through this resources and collaborations with them, we were able to empower our students. For example, our medical students just finished a project with WHO where we analyzed over 7,000 articles to address the gap between health and climate change. And at the same time with the Global Climate and Health Summit, we co-organized with them an annual summit where we get to invite our members as well as delegates that are attending the Climate Change Conference to learn more about the importance of planetary health and its interlinkages with the climate negotiations and policy making very impressed on how you all find the time to do all these things i'm struggling to uh find time to make my own bread and suddenly you're all participating in a lot of conferences thank you for sharing that uh mayad i'm gonna toss it up to you and throw you a curveball here with a uh with a question i see in the chat uh and it relates to um it, the question relates to how in the in the, in the global south what we might call the global south there is still a wide digital gap, connectivity gap, technology gap, etc. Tell us how the partnership with Telesauji has helped you overcome that gap and how do we find these partners like Telesauji and the importance of actually leveraging public infrastructure uh, when, when trying to overcome barriers to technology and, and digital connection? The first thing, Carlos, is that, uh, that I think it's very important is that education couldn't never be a commodity so any person that does the course it's a person it's a student it's a learner it it doesn't need to pay it doesn't need to to and that's what moved myself as well i was just thinking about like the the we had the partnerships we didn't we didn't got the money and i have my two hands the idea and the weekends <laughs> and that's how many of the things were done, like in the nights and, the, and after midnight. And that was a lot of energy. And uh, uh, the course we work as a multiplier. What I believe, and I, I worked with my community health workers, like uh, with very low resources, like just meeting them and discussing about like uh, the uh, planetary health issues. And this is one of the things. So if we have thousand people that concluded the course and a part of them will work as a multiplier and then we can close this gap. Of course, that we need uh, in Brazil, for instance, we are very, living a very hard and harsh time and uh, this, these gaps will probably increase. And this is an issue as well for planetary health. Like, But on the other hand, uh, we are being able to making people think about it identify because for many people it wasn't identifiable uh, like that's the the heat stress or the 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 consequences of air pollution they weren't identifiable so i think that's how we keep multiplying and and uh reaching other people with this this idea so that's what i believe and then the, really that anyone can do it and one um, curiosity about the course is that we were uh, presenting it before the pandemic and uh, presenting like uh, how it will work in a, in a symposium that we have done in Porto Alegre in 2018 at the end uh, 2019 actually and then a girl from the Fridays for Future rose her hand and said why I couldn't do this course I want to do this course and I was like I was planning to do for undergrads or people that were in the university and she was like i want to do it and i was like i don't have an, a good an argument for you to not to do this course i should adapt it 
for you to be able to do this course. So we have almost all the, the things ready for launch. And then we, I work more two months to adapt the language, to create a glossary for being, for being open to all to, 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 to do the course. So that's the importance as well of making it available for, for all. Martin, I, I know you want to comment on that. And uh, Mayara, I just want to say, uh, I mean, I know you're highly influenced by the work of Paulo Freire, and so am I. And again, I can't be in a Brazilian conference hosted in Brazil in Sao Paulo and not speak of the importance of Paulo Freire in my work. Martin, I know you've had huge influence with uh, the work of Hannah Arendt. So tell us your perspective here. You rose your hand. What did you want to share with us? I just wanted to say how important it is when we talk about planetary health education to not just look at health professionals, but all disciplines. It's very important and we have the first uh, corporations now at the University of Munich to see it as a core framing for all of the work of all disciplines. Because if, it is, uh, if the health of humans is threatened, it's not a health issue, it's a human issue. And uh, we are seeing it is really important to make these ideas behind it available to everyone. And in a way, that's uh, also, you know, going back to some of the ideas of Hannah Arendt, who saw that real power is emerging between people when they treat each other as equals and work on the things that are mostly relevant for what is at stake in our times. And there's nothing more at stake as the survival of our civilization on a global scale in a way that we transform ourselves to have a different relationship to nature. Very important, while health professional and health narrative can really be a game changer because it has been missing, as Omnia has pointed out, Mayara has been pointed out, it is also clear it is a key theme for every kind of human being. So it's for the teachers, it's for the lawyers, it's for the entertainers, it's for the artists, it's for the religious people, it's for everyone. And it's very important to share it like this and also to make it available like this, because only if we have a transformation kind of owned and created by many, many disciplines and a new spirit in working with each other in the global south, led by the global south, but also led in the, in the global north. So if we don't get a different relationship as the core of it to nature and to ourselves, we will not do it. And how do we get there? By working together in the spirit we do here, so only if we experience a transformative kind of spirit that is needed now, it will be infectious. So that's, uh, that's what I wanted to share. Great, thanks, Martin. Uh, I think we gotta find a better word than infectious given uh, the, the pandemic. I think we should find a, a little bit of a more positive word out there. Uh, but I, I get the idea that you're getting to. I really hear a lot of the, this, uh, I really like what you said, Mayara, about education not being a commodity. Uh, I, I, what we, we've, we've discussed this uh, in, in quite deep breath around the understanding of education as a public good. Uh, and I think the University of Sao Paulo is a good representation of that being a public university. And then there's some countries that have strayed away from that and have seen higher education as a commodity. And I think it's important to just say in these spaces how dangerous that can be to the access of information and what that means for democracies and societies as they want to move forward. So I just want to acknowledge that all of your approaches are really taking a, a basic rights approach to education. And that's one of the key essence uh, elements of planetary health education. So keep that in mind for the people that are listening in. Mayad, I, I saw your hand raised. Did you want to comment on, on some of what Martin was saying? Just very quick, uh, Carlos. Is that uh, because I also want to hear Omnia, but uh, uh, what is about the course as well is that we have a very strong base on on evidence. So it's a very strong evidence base, but we have a, another side in the forums, in the interaction, in the badges, which mixes art and cultural and uh, in uh, some like traditional features, which are very important, like that. Planetary health is also an issue from, for arts, for music. We need to be all the places. Uh, that's, this is education as well. And uh, of course the course is cool, but we need to be in, in many parts, in many, in many places to be talking about this. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Mayara. And when we talk about education, it's like so important to understand that we educate not for the mere transfer of knowledge, 
but because we're part of an arc of change in which the person who is being educated, the trainer, the trainee, is eventually going out to the world and become an agent of change, as Martin was saying. Now, Omnia, let's, let's talk a little bit about how that transformation happens. And it really seems that what you're doing, your work, even yourself, really personify that ethos of transformative education, right? Uh, it's more than just skills. You're talking about the values that drive people and go, that go into the world and act. How do you, in your work, uh, Omnia, bring this transformational perspective uh, into your work? And why do you think this is so important? Um, yes, so what I have learned from my experience working in iPharmacy is that as I entered medical school, I always saw that my, my role as a medical student lies towards my patients, and that's what we learn. But then through the advocacy work and the experience with IFMC, I learned that it does not lie towards my patients, it also lies towards my community. And that's what we always aim to do when we're raising awareness about planetary health among our members so that they can learn about the interlinkages between planetary health and what they study in terms of clinical knowledge. We also want to empower them to be messengers and advocates to deliver the right message when it comes to planetary health. And what I wanted to highlight and what Martin and Maera touched upon is the importance of the multidisciplinarity of planetary health. And we are very um, well positioned as a youth organization to do that because we are part of many different youth constituencies within the UN that come from diverse backgrounds. And we noticed that during COVID specifically, we were asked by diverse backgrounds from environmental backgrounds to engineering to different policy making uh, youth constituencies asking us for them to deliver sessions on how planetary health and human health is interlinked because they saw with COVID that there are interlinkages that they want love to learn more about. And because of that, as medical students, we were able to communicate the right message that they needed and work from a multidisciplinary area. Um, but what I wanted to also highlight is that us as advocates is and this transformational arch, I see it done on three levels. One, on an individual level, us as students advocating in our own workplace. And that's why we are working on advocating for our hospitals and our universities to be environment friendly, to be sustainable. So we are walking the talk. And at the same time, in our conferences and the meetings that we are doing, we also have recommendations to ensure that our carbon footprint is minimized to the least. And at the same time, if we're thinking on a country level, whenever we have the opportunity to go to conferences or attend webinars and we have delegations, they, they have the opportunity to talk with their leaders and countries and communicate with them the right message according to the context that they are part of. And we also have a database that has all the activities that our students are doing around the world as to inspire one another. But finally, on a, on a global level, to, for us as young students to have an impact globally, we do that through our partnerships. And it's important for us that we don't just go to meetings and attend and, and speak, but we also organize our own side events, do our own actions, participate in negotiations, and so on, because we also see that Yes, we come from a health background, but the health argument can really provide opportunities for increasing action for the health of our planet as well as our own health. Thanks for that. And I, I really um, take away from you the role uh, of advocacy that the health professional needs to have. We can't just be health professionals or professionals for that sake in, in, in a small academic environment or a small clinic or a small hospital, wherever we are, we need to be, go, move beyond those walls and really use our knowledge, use our skills, use our value driven kind of what drives us to actually create change. So Martin, a question for you and coming in from, from the chat, how do you balance this out in, 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 in what you do? How do you balance the hard skills, which employers are asking for, right? A lot of employers are asking for hard skills. I mean, I think this is very much uh, resonant to what happens in Germany. But how do we also educate for the essential skills, as I like to call them, not soft skills, that are needed to see the change that we want to uh, see in the world? I very much like your distinction between hard skills and essential skills, because it points to, if you just have the hard skills and not the essential skills, you will not get a lot done. 
And in my work with large organization, independent of if it is Gavi or WHO or large commercial organizations, if you look at implementing change, at the end of the day, it's always the quality of relationship between people that implements change. So if you're not learning what it takes on a relationship level to reach out, to get together when things are difficult, to find new ways of cooperating across hierarchies, we are not kind of real about what we have in front of us and how we can transform things. At the end of the day, of course, we need to understand our disciplines, but then it takes the, chance, the courage and the willingness to look across in all the different disciplines relevant for a certain subject, come together, learn from each other, and then be fast in implementing the things that need to be doing going fast, but also the ones that take years to implement to still work on them. So relationship is at the core, it's essential. And normally in our training, we assume when we know everything, kind of relationship would be easy, but it is not. It's the most complex thing that is around. So it's important to always stay with the spirit of being a beginner, of dealing with the unknown, also the spirit of failing forward because not everything will be going well. We have to experiment, we have to learn, we have to be funny with each other, we have to have a good spirit, things like this. So it's a journey, it's an adventurous journey, but it's also the greatest gift that is around on, on, on earth to work together with amazing people from around the globe on the most daunting tasks that we have in front of us. Indeed, they're, they're quite daunting, but it, it, in, in, in good company, it sure feels that uh, you're not alone and that you can accomplish a lot. You, you touched upon uh, kind of the journey as an educator and part of that includes a transformation in ourselves as educators and as people, as individuals and how I see ourselves. Mayara, I heard you speak of kind of the, how you seen a, a, how planetary health changed the way you understand. As an educator, how did you go from seeing it to living it and then applying it in your, in your teachings and in your work? Thank you, Carlos. If you think about uh, like, the last two years of human uh, development is like humans and nature were a long time ago together and then we broke up and then we feel that nature uh, we care nature but we don't feel that we are part of nature i don't know wh what do you think but i feel that many people don't think that they are part of nature but actually we are part of nature and my way to stitch it together or to suture it it's true education. I think education can show us that we are part of nature. We don't have another home. Earth is our home. You cannot put your garbage out because out is earth. It's home. It's where we live. So my, I think uh, the way that I found to think about planetary health and to think about being a human in this world and nature is, is teaching it it's suturing it to, with education. It's putting the humans back into nature or that they understand or that we understand that we are part of nature. That's very essential. It's not just myself that I'm mean, saying, like it's the indigenous people from Brazil that are saying it. It's we have been for a long time, have been oriented to, to colonize and this, but we have a lot to learn with people, with our indigenous and native communities, and that we are part of nature. When we burn Amazon, we are burning our home. We are breathing that air, this air. And it's not just about Brazil, it's the world. And every single day I, I will use my energy and I will use it uh, uh, in my office with the patients as well. Uh, I have, uh, I try to use one minute for planetary health. So I try to recommend to people go cycling or to, to, to be uh, like, uh, reduce meat, this kind of things. And it's really important for us to, to translate. And education is about translation as well. In the level that we are doing, it's about translating it for all that is, is being accessible. People have the right to know that the climate is changing and have the right to know that we don't have this earth forever if we don't change the way that we are living. And that's a right. 
And uh, we are from, I am from Brazil, I'm from the south of the world. We live the, the consequences much worse here. People emit much more CO2 uh, on, on the north of the world and we live the consequences. My patients, sometimes I see that they are hungry and this food insecurity, it's also my concern and it is planetary health. I cannot see myself uh, without it. And education for me is the big key for, for this. Thanks for sharing those and those thoughts. And it just speaks to the importance of one, uh, thinking of the consequences of our actions in other places of the world, part of that interconnectivity that we teach in, 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 in planetary health. We might be very comfortable in our homes in Portland, in Seattle, in wherever it be in the Northern Hemisphere, but we sometimes forget that our actions have consequences in other places of the world, as you were saying, uh, the, the fires of the Amazon, as you were saying, Omnia, also the air, the air you breathe in Cairo. And it, I just want to bring that into, into attention and how that should be also an important component of what we teach in planetary health, how those things are connected and how actions in one place have ripple effects and actions in another. Uh, that's, again, just... Uh, uh, that's some, some of the perspectives we bring into the planetary health education framework that you can access through our, our website. Uh, and we launched this this, this morning. I, we're coming up on time. And um, I, I wanted to give a, a, an opportunity for Omnia here to close up. Uh, I know there's a lot of students that are connected right now listening. And um, it is so important that this the change does not happen, not only from policy decision makers, and a top-down approach, but we really need to start focusing on building movements from the bottom up. And Omnia, as a student, what would you tell your fellow colleagues that are listening in uh, on how to start this change? And there's been some questions in the chat, and I just want to uh, um, give you an opportunity to, to talk to these fellow colleagues of yours, students, learners that are listening. What would you tell them where to start? Um, yes, I always get asked this question and, and for me personally, I always see the answer for it is to build awareness and knowledge. I cannot emphasize how important it is. I, at first, I thought that as students, we're all aware about climate change and planetary health and its interlinkages, not just on health, but on diverse disciplines. But there are many of our colleagues, our friends who are not aware. And now more than ever, we it is the time for us to be vocal and to communicate how planetary health is important and is, is a, an integral part of our life. And it's also uh, um, our responsibility to advocate for, because as young people, this is going to be the world that we will inhabit. And this is, this is our future. So we need to bring that sense of urgency to planetary health and to lead first to raise awareness among our uh, friends, our students, our university. And then at the same time, this will really enable us to drive the change that we would like to see. And my last closing sentence would be is to always be persistent. It, it always has its challenges. You will receive a lot of, you know, challenges that you need to overcome either from your university, from different policymakers, even from students as well. But the key is to always be persistent and, and believe in the message that you would like to see, believe in the vision that you would like to have. And planetary health is really the, the ultimate goal that we should all work together on. So much to capture from all of your work and uh, so hard to do it in such a little time. Um, I really appreciate you all taking the time to share your thoughts and share your insights here uh, in, our, in the Planetary Health Annual Meeting 2021. Um, I just want to give some brief announcements before we, we, we leave. I do want to invite people to say to the closing uh, remarks uh, that are happening right after this uh, panel and also to uh, assist uh, the side events that you can find in the side event uh, tab in our Planetary Health Annual Meeting. Uh, website, and as well to say for the lightning talks today, which will be talking to a very important uh, uh, theme, which is food and nutrition, uh, and how that relates to planetary health. So there will be lightning talks this afternoon after the closing remarks. Um, the closing remarks will be in this same Zoom room, so you don't have to go anywhere. Uh, and just before I go, just want to say thank you again to the organizers 
and to our panelists, Mayara, Martin, and Omnia. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the conference. What a wonderful panel. Thank you, Mayara, Martin, Carlos, and Nomia. It was great being here on the backstage, uh, listening you so to you and, <laughs> and learning, learning a lot. Yeah, I'll surely be watching all these panels closely and calmly after the conference. Thanks, everything is recorded. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Great very to much. see you. Is thank Marie you, here? Sarah, is, yeah. Thank you all. Yeah, yes, we're doing that for you. you. Hi, Thank Marie. You. Hi, yeah. how are you? Great, wasn't it? It was incredible. I just, I, I'm with you though. I need to listen to it when I'm not yeah. doing 13 other things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we had another wonderful day today. So you, you, you please stay with us here at the closing ceremony. Please join us and sh help us share your beautiful smiles with the audience while we close it. Marie, would you like to start with the closing? Yes, absolutely. And I, are we ready to go there? Yeah, we were still online, so I think it's, it's all the same. Terrific. Real well, online. thank you again. Um, yes, I want to thank everyone for joining us during the second day of the 2021 annual meeting, where we have over 4,600 registrants from 128 countries. And that number continues to grow, which is incredibly exciting for us to see that um, the concepts in, in, uh, of planetary health are in demand, in high demand, and people want to know about them. And we are learning a lot from all of the participants as well. Today, we focused on the theme of knowledge for planetary health with the goal of having conversations around how to foster and embed a planetary health ethos, context, and content throughout our global research and educational institutions and funding organizations, and how to get that information into educational materials and institutions as well. And today's conversations really focus on the structural changes that need to be made in research, education, and funding organizations. And wonderfully, what we learned was that these changes um, not only are being actively and seriously discussed and considered, but they're really being acted upon within these institutions. And, and things are moving quickly. Um, people are waking up to the fact that we need to make these changes, not only as individuals, but also as organizations and institutions. And, and that action is being put into motion as we speak. Um, we learned about fantastic examples of planetary health being embedded, not only within education departments, for example, within universities, but as operational frameworks for entire educational institutions, impacting all aspects of the institution's decision making. And so that's the kind of systemic change that we're really looking for and that we need in order for planetary health concepts to go to scale and for us to achieve the great transition. We heard um, also a reaffirmation that funding agencies or organizations are dedicated to addressing the grand challenges of our time. And we know that for sure. Um, and so that wasn't necessarily new news, but while uh, what we did learn as well is that there, they continue to be uh, persistent, I think is a good word, about, about not only um, doing excellent work in their particular areas of focus, but that they're sincerely interested in collaborating with each other across funding organizations and with partners to create long-term systemic change. Um, these, are, they also emphasized um, the inf their, they, they also place an emphasis on translating knowledge to action and engaging with policymakers to ensure that we can create large scale change on the local, regional, national, and international levels. So that is also um, makes us feel good and gives us hope. And then we closed out with a really lively and wonderfully informative panel on how planetary health educational courses and materials are gaining traction around the world and that they're being developed for everyone, not just for medical students or 
um, practitioners in, as you might think perhaps, but for all disciplines at all levels of education and the general public. And so planetary health concepts and content are really being disseminated globally across the world. And that's, um, that was really wonderful. And so now I just wanna hand it over to my colleague, my wonderful colleague, Antonio, um, to close us out in this session. Thank you, Mary. Wonderful uh, summary of what we had. Difficult to summarize because it was so wonderful. So many things, so many things to think about and to, as I said, watch them uh, again and again and again. Well, a few um, uh, things to remind you. If you weren't able to watch the, the panels live, if you know someone who was not able to do it, please remind them and you yourself. Uh, the sessions are being recorded. They'll be uh, available for viewing uh, starting tomorrow. There's always, always the, only the need to make some editing. They'll be available in the same place, the same um, section sessions uh, link. You'll be able to watch them again. Uh, spread the word about that. Some uh, information about PHA. I can continue with that, Marie. Now, individual membership uh, is something new to PHA. So before this meeting, only institutions could be members of the Planetary Health Alliance. Now individuals can be members as well. So if you want to and think about it, think, think seriously about that, join us and uh, visit the PHA uh, booth or HILO booth and you'll find the link to be a member, individual member, or maybe you can convince your institution to be a member as well, my institutional member. Um, also, um, HILO is a good place for you to keep the conversation going on with your colleagues, your, your peers from your country, from your discipline, or from th this extraordinary multidisciplinary um, area, which is planetary health. Also remember that we have uh, the regional hubs initiative, totally redesigned and now take a chance, have a look at them at, again at HILO, which are the hubs. There certainly is one that encompasses your region, your country, either your country of origin or the place where you live or you act. So join us as well. Um, and there's also the Sao Paulo Declaration. Remember that this is a declaration, the first time that the, this community is going to issue a declaration uh, about what we need to do uh, to achieve that change, that, that great transition. And we want to hear your voice, you as a student, as a professional from any area, uh, any kind of role you have, we want to hear you. So join the conversation, join the simple declaration and send us your, your comments, your suggestions. And you can do that by visiting the booth of the simple declaration in the booth area of the platform, signing up and then uh, sending your conversation, sending your, your ideas. Uh, don't forget, that we still have many uh, other events going on uh, today and tomorrow before the start of the main uh, program. So don't miss them. Some wonderful uh, side events, independently organized, wonderful themes, uh, wonderful people there as well. So don't miss them. I think that's it, Marie. So thank you and we will meet uh, again at 11 uh, a.m. Brazil time. Check your time, see you tomorrow, right? Well, yes, and just don't forget the science lightning talks that are coming up next in about 10 oh, yes. minutes. Yes, in a minute. Yes, see you there. Thank Bye -bye. you.